Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We are still in the studio with Bumi Ajakaye, movie director, popularly known as Director B, with movies like SGIT, like Skinny Girl in Transit, my, my mom and I, or my wife and I, as well as the um, project recently done by Aresa Ugu, where she converted her book, The Smart Morning Woman, into a TV series. All these and more are credited to her name. And to be on the show, she's my guest. Thank you very much for joining me, Bumi Ajakaye. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. It is a pleasure to have you. So let's talk about when you officially started uh, being a director, why you chose to be a director. Hmm. Maybe why not a, a producer <laughs> or a writer or an actor? Okay, so I started out as a writer and an editor. Those are the two things I really wanted to do because I felt those are the two things that didn't involve anyone else. You can write on your own. You can edit on your own. But along the line, I picked up skills like uh, learning how to do continuity, and then I became an assistant director. I never wanted to be a director. I ne guys, I never wanted to be a director <laughs> because it's such a big role, and it's not, as we say, it's not beans <laughs> to be a director. So it wasn't in my plan. Uh, I just happened to have skills that enabled me to execute. So when the opportunity came, and of course I said, ah, no, thank you. <laughs> it's such an honor, but thanks. <laughs> I don't think it's for me. So my boss, Nia Akimolanya, said, mm, you don't want to direct. Uh, then you're fired. I was like, sir. So yeah, if you don't shoot the film, you can't be in Antil Studios. So uh, I was like, so now I have to go and shoot a film. So I wasn't scared. I just did it so that I wouldn't lose my job at Antil as an editor. And I did it. It went well. And then other offers. What was the first project you worked on? A very pro first project was as a, a director. film by Udwak Isong of Wamanam called uh, It's About Your Husband. And we co wrote, did I write part of Yeah, I co wrote that with her years and years before we even shot it. Because I was a writer, like I said, I had no interest. She just said, I think you should do it. And I was like, no. And my boss called me. I'm shooting it. That was it. And now you are a director. You're more known for your work with uh, films you've directed or as a director than being an editor or a Absolutely. writer. If you had to choose, though, which would you choose? <laughs> uh, OK, um, I'm enjoying directing. It took a while. I, I really like the solitude of the other things that I do. But now, um, I can say. I, I, I don't mind the directing part. I wouldn't say I love it more than the others because I love writing. It's, you're creating from scratch. And I love editing. You're saving films and putting it together. So, Let, yeah. Let's talk about your work with Skinny Girl in Transit. Yes. It was a film or a series that caught the heart of a lot of people around the world. I yes. wouldn't restrict it to just Nigeria. Absolutely. How did you get on Skinny Girl in Transit? Okay, so I used to watch the show. I, 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 I directed and co-wrote the fourth and fifth season which was, uh, for the last two years. Uh, prior to that, I used to watch the show, and you know, I would, like everyone else, I'd leave comments. I was a fan, and um, out of the blue, I mean, Bola Craig calls me and says, "Yo, um, what are you doing right now?" I was like, ah, "You know, this and that," and she says, "Okay, so I want you to come in and uh, see what you think about directing Skinny Girl," and I laughed and I said, "No, <laughs> thank you, but no, because I wanted to watch the show like everyone else. Don't ask me to come and be inside. I want to watch it. I want to sit back, put my feet up." and watch Skinny Girl in Transit. But if I've shot it and written it, where's, like, where's the surprise? <laughs> and she was like, uh, no, come in, let's do a meeting. So we did a meeting, and then, you know, it became, I knew how much it meant for them to have offered me this show that everyone seemed to love. You know, and of course, I was ready to, like, push it really to the limit. Like, if you watch season five, it was, <laughs> I, uh, cast and crew, once again, I'm sorry for pushing you so hard. <laughs> Speaking of cast and crew, yes. uh, what, what do you look out for in actors that you work with? I believe that directors have a large role to play in determining mm. who plays what character. Well, sometimes we do. Other times we leave it to providence and chance, you know. Um, there are artists and, or actors that you want for some reason they're not available. Or, you know, opportunities open for people that you may initially not have thought of, but, you know, hey... They happen to be right place, right time. So the one thing I look out for, and it's the only thing, is your willingness to be directed. It's that simple. And I know that it sounds cliche, but it, it's very rare sometimes to find actors that completely give themselves to you. And that's all you can ask for. You know, they're not trying to act like they know more than you. And shout out to, to the veterans that I've worked with, Ramzi Noah, Omoni Oboli, my wife and I. I've never seen such submissive actors. I didn't expect it. They were any director, any, what, just tell us what you want. 
amazing. Have you ever had to deal with divas? I think that's what they refer <laughs> to, people who, who feel that they are larger than you or mm. they have more experience and more expertise, and as such, they do not think that they can take instructions from you on set. Oh, this is such an interesting question. I love that you asked it. Um, when I was assistant director on the two wedding parties, my first interview, I was asked by the executive producer, <laughs> and she said to me, well, how do people respond to you when you give them orders? And I said... Um, Nigerian crew are professionals. They understand that they are taking instructions from the position that the person is in and not so much the person. So a lot of the times when people want to be divas or what have you, um, it's very important to let them know that they're in a safe place. Sometimes it's fear and it's a defense mechanism. It's a wall. They don't really mean to be that way. They just need to trust that you know what you're doing. And once you can prove that, smooth sailing from there. So you worked on the wedding party. Yes. Tell us about that experience. Ah, it was fantastic. So I worked on the two. I assisted and directed on the two. Well, first for Kemi Aditiwa, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And second for Nia Kimolayo, of course, my boss. So he's great. <laughs> the first wedding party was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. I mean, that has to be the biggest film we've ever done in Nigeria with that number of extras. And first of all, seating them, making sure that they are costumed properly on time, making sure actors have their lines. I mean... And the first one I worked with, a, a fantastic guy called Chris. And so together, we were able to build some synergy. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was stressful. It was a lot of long days, but it paid off. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Now, my, of all the projects that you've worked on, which would you say has been the most challenging so far? Ooh. Well, challenges are relative, let's be honest. So um, they're all unique in their own way. Um, what I think would have been the most stressful one, stressful, is still the wedding parties because as AD, everything kind of falls on you. As director, you can chill. <laughs> and when they are ready, they'll call me. But the wedding parties, were re it, it was challenging because we had never dealt with that kind of skill before. So that has been my... And, and, and after I did wedding party, I can do anything. <laughs> uh, just uh, How many extras? 100 piece of cake. <laughs> What, what exactly is the scope of the director? What, what is the work of the director for those who are not in the film industry? You know, some of these terms can be a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm in the industry, I can understand yes. what the work of director is. But some people don't know, producer, director, director. Mm -hmm. and script. Well, what exactly what do, you do? do you do as okay. a director? So as director, your job is basically to un first understand your material, the script. Then um, you're familiar with your actors. And your job is to kind of mold them into that character, guide them into the character. So you know things about the character sometimes that they don't even know. Mannerisms, which we call character tags. So your job is to help the actor shed their own real self and enter into the character that's been written for them. That's it. And the minute they understand, because I've had that moment where it's a struggle sometimes, but the minute the actor gets it, they're there with you. They understand what you're saying. So how true is this statement? Some people say that they're not really bad actors, but they're bad directors. And at the end of the day, <laughs> the success or otherwise of an actor's performance is largely dependent on the kind of director that they have. Yes, yes, yes. That, that is actually true. Um, I won't say there are no bad actors. They're just actors that are not there yet. Because if you've chosen this path, you better be working on your craft. Um, sometimes directors face some difficulty, things that are out of their control. Things that may have happened from pre-production stage that will spill over and affect shoot. And that's the reason why there's always a lot of conflict on set between director and, say, producer or EP, because we have to protect the fact that your name is on this project. How many people will you go and knock on the window and say, hey, um, about that film, you know that scene? I'm so sorry. It wasn't like that. That's not the plan. So we can't apologize to people if it tanks, it's on you. I mean, it's a Bumi Ajakaye film. Ajakaye film. So they'll be like, well, it was her film. Why did she let that happen? But... In the ecosystem that we're in in Nollywood, a lot is not up to you, you know. And this is Nigeria. If we had a fantastic location to shoot and someone comes and says, leave my house, leave my house. Or if it rains and you had planned a big garden party, which we did for the Smart Money Woman, and it poured all day. So what did you do? We waited. <laughs> we just had to keep waiting. And it was a day party. It was a child's party. So how do you have a child's party in the night? So we're filming. When it stops raining a little, we move in, shoot, and then we come out. It was so crazy, but then how many people can you stop and explain to that? Listen, we've been there since 9 o'clock. It started raining at 9.40 a.m. How was it like working with Arisa Ugu, converting her book, The Smart Money Woman, <laughs> to The Smart Money Woman TV series? series. Um, well, that's, that was an, another unique challenge on its own. This is my first book adaptation to, to screen. So um, my first 
uh, uh, a concern was making sure that the themes and the ideas that the book had don't get lost in translation on screen. Because it happens all the time. People read books and they go, oh, well, I don't like the film because when they, I wrote, I read the book and da da da. From the Game of Thrones. I was to going the, to mention yeah. Game of Thrones. So the people who read these books, they have such personal ties to them. And when they see it on TV and it's not how they imagined, they get very upset. <laughs> so I, I know that um, I, 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 RSM made it so easy for me because we had seamless communication. If I want to change something, if I had a suggestion, she'd be like, oh, I'm willing to learn. This is her first run in the industry. So she was very open to suggestion. We had one of the easiest working relationships, hands down, one of the easiest. Even though she made it look like she was a slave driver on Instagram, <laughs> she kept making it look like, well, I'm pushing my team so it. hard, yet they're being so understanding. But I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of RSA for the work that, and all the energy. I mean, I've seen some of the cast, Demi mm. of course, my boy. Yes. And all the Killed amazing it. people that have been on the project. But I'm speaking with Bumi Ajakaye, director B. She's worked on several projects, and we have a trailer from one of them. I believe it's my wife and I. So let's check it out. And that is the, an excerpt of the trailer of a project that Director V has worked on. My wife and I featuring Omoni Oboli, Ramsino, and a host of other TV stars. Yes. But thank you so much for joining us. Final thank words you. and thoughts for people who want to be directors, you know, upcoming directors, or aspiring directors. Mm. Well, um, is that where they are? <laughs> okay, <Yes>. hey guys. <laughs> so um, my only advice to you is to uh, learn the ropes. Learn almost every step of the filmmaking process. It's, it's what sets you apart. It's what lets you understand what's happening before it happens. It's what makes you preempt disasters before it happens. So, like, I had to, like, literally rise in the ranks. And it, it, it helps me know when something is about to go wrong and the best way to solve it. So, please take your time to understand the process of filmmaking. And you should be fine. Very, very important. But thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for We're having me. We're speaking with Bumi Ajakaye, Director B. And you can follow her on Instagram at Bumi Ajakaye. And hopefully, you know, make yourself available. For those of you who are aspiring actors, you should be farms in directors. <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.